everyone. Welcome to our exploration of globalization, a phenomenon that has reshaped our world, connecting distant corners and culture in unprecedented ways. Today, we will delve into how globalization not only accelerates economic and technological advancement, but also challenges our understanding of cultural identity and environmental sustainability. Now, as we navigate through this chapter, we'll uncover the intricate tapestry of global interdependence, the opportunities it presents for collaboration and innovation, and the critical challenges we face in creating a balanced global community. Join me as we embark on this enlightening journey, understanding the forces that drive our world closer together, yet sometimes pull us apart. Now, the main um, subject or chapter that we're going to discuss is globalization. And these are the learning objectives of the lessons. At the end of this lesson, the student will be able to articulate a clear definition and understanding of globalization, identify and explain the main drivers of globalization, Describe the evolving nature of the global economy and its characteristics. And assess how globalization creates opportunities and challenges for management practices. Now, these are the topics covered. Understanding globalization, the definition, markets, and production. Historical evolutions and drivers of globalization. Third, the changing demographics of global economy. Fourth, globalization and management practices. Fifth is globalization's opportunities and challenges. And lastly, the future of globalization. Now, the introduction to globalization. Let's start with the shift in the world economy. Now, over the past decades, five past five decades, there has been a fundamental shift from self-contained national economies to an integrated global economic system. Globalization refers to the process of integration and interdependence among national economies. Second is recent political changes in globalization. Political events like the Brexit, NAFTA, re uh, renegotiation, the NAFTA renegotiation and the U.S.-China trade dispute have brought uncertainty to the future of globalization. Despite these uncertainties, a complete pullback from globalization seems unlikely, but it actually benefits and more debated now and then before. Next is the corporate adaptation to globalization. Example of this is actually Apple. Levering global supply chains for efficient production while facing criticism for excessive offshoring and adap adapting to uh, geopolitical risk. Next is debate on globalization. A balance between global trade and maintaining national sovereignty is a central point of debate in the international business. Next is everyday impact of globalization. Globalization affects everyday life, exemplified by how products like cars and smartphones are created and distributed globally. Now, shift from country of origin quality assurance to co company-based or relationship-based assurance, or CRM, will actually made of this. Next is the cultural and economic implication. Increasing global interconnectedness of goods, services, and investment, and the role of international institutions in promoting lower barriers to trade. Globalization protests focused on issues like unemployment and developed nations and cultural impacts. Next is business opportunities and challenges. Of course, globalization offers opportunities for revenue expansion and cost reduction, but also creates competitive uh, pressures and um, job security concerns. And lastly is technological advancement and globalization. 
Now, technology has lowered transportation costs and facilitate, facilitated the rise of skilled workers in developing countries, leading to a more flat world in terms of opportunities. Now, understanding globalization, definitions, markets, and production. Now, what do you mean by globalization, really? Globalization is actually a process that reflects a fundamental transformation in the world economy over the past five decades. It signifies the shift from relatively self-contained national economies towards a more integrated and interdependent global economic system. Now, this transformation has been driven by declining barriers to cross-border trade and investment, advances in transportation, and telecommunications technology and convergence in consumer taste and business practices across the world. The fur or one of the facets of globalization is globalization of markets. The globalization of markets refers to the merging of historically distinct and you know, separate national market into one huge global marketplace. In many industries, it's becoming increasingly difficult to identify national market as separate entities. Instead, there's a move towards a single global market. The best example for this actually is a company like Coca-Cola operates in almost every country in the world if we're offering products that caters to a global market while adjusting flavors and marketing strategies to fit local preferences. Now, what is the impact? Um, uh, what is the impact no? of globalization of markets in the economies? Of course, this facet of globalization has led to the standardization of products across countries and cultures, making um, them universally recognizable and accessible. So it is crucial for businesses, of course, right, to understand and adapt to local market condition even as they operate on a global scale. The next facet, next facet is the globalization of production. Now, what is globalization production? This actually refers to, to the sourcing of goods and services from location around the globe to take advantage of national differences in the cost and quality factors of production, such as labor, um, energy, land, and capital. Companies can now split their production processes across different countries to maximize efficiency and minimize the cost. Best example for this actually is Apple, right? Apple Incorporation is an excellent example of this aspect of globalization. While its product design and software development are primarily done in California, the component parts are manufactured globally. And final assembly is done in various countries, including China, Brazil, and India. This global production strategy allows Apple to leverage efficiencies and expertise from different parts of the world. Next facet of globalization is integration and interdependence. Let's talk about economic integration. Now, this facet of globalization reflect the growing economic integration and interdependence among nation countries among nations. Now, countries are no longer isolated by barriers, distance, or differences in industrial development. For instance, the European Union represents a significant step towards economic integration, with member countries operating as a single market with standardized laws and free movement of goods, services, and people. The next one is interdependence economies. The global economy now function as an interconnected network where changes in one part can have a significant impact in another. This interdependence was evident during the two, uh, 2008 financial crisis where economic downturns in a few countries affected the global economy. Now, 
Understanding globalization requires an appreciation of how global market and production are intertwined and how they are contributed to the broader picture of an interconnected uh, global economy. The example of multinational corporations like Coca-Cola and Apple illustrated the practical application of these concepts. These companies not only demonstrate the benefits of global operations, but also highlight the challenges and responsibilities that come with being players in the global market. The next one is the second you know, topic that we're going to discuss is historical evolutions and drivers of uh, globalization. Now, let's start with historical evolution of globalization. The first here is transition from isolation to integration. Now, over the past five decades, the global economy has transitioned from self-contained, isolated national economies to an integrated global economic system. This change has been driven by declining barriers to cross-border trade and investment, advancements in transportation and telecommunications, and the merging of material culture across the world. The second one here is recent political events influencing the globalization. Recent political events such as the Brexit, the renegotiation of NAFTA or North, North American trade, a free trade agreement and US-China trade dispute have raised questions about the future and inevitability of globalization. These events contribute to uncertainty and debate over the benefits of globalization. Now, example for this, of course, Apple, right? The Apple Incorporation. This exemplifies a company that has thrived due to globalization. Its global supply chain for the iPhone involving design in California and assembly across various countries highlights the reduced barriers to international trade and investment. However, geopolitical tensions and trade disputes have also led Apple to adjust strategy, diversifying its assembly operation and invest, investing more in the United States. Next is technological, the main drivers of globalization. So um, first is earlier we discussed the historical evolution of globalization um, as part of this, right? And right now, we're going to discuss the main drivers of globalization. So the first one is technological advancement. Technologies or techno technological advances have played a, a pivotal role in reducing transportation costs and enabling the rise of skilled workers in developing countries. The world has become flatter with opportunities increasingly accessible regarding of geographical location. Best example for this is the internet and communication technologies. The Google and Facebook has revolutionized information and exchange and communication globally. Google search engine and Facebook social network have connected billions of people worldwide, transcending geographical boundaries. Next is the transportation technologies. Boeing and Airbus have transformed global air travel with their advanced aircraft making long distance travel faster and more accessible, thus facilitating increased global connectivity and business interactions. Next is political policies and economic trend. Now, favorable political and economic trends have facilitated the global expansion of business. The reduction of trade barriers by international institutions like the World Trade Organization and adoption of free trade agreement have significantly influenced globalization. Example for this is the FTA or the free trade agreement. The European Union is a prime example of political policies influencing globalization. E the EU's policies on free movement of goods, services, and people among its member states have significantly enhanced trade and economic integration in Europe. Next one is the deregulation and liberalization 
China's entry into the World Trade Organi Organization in 2001 marked a major shift in global trade dynamics. China's economic liberalization and integration into the global trade system have made it a major hub of manufacturing and export. Third is the economic strategies of business opportunities. The globalization process offers numerous opportunities for businesses to expand their revenues and reduce costs by producing in cost-effective countries. This trend has transformed industries and created new competitive dynamics. Example are the following, the outsourcing and offshoring. Offshore, I'm sorry, outsourcing and offshoring. Example is the Aqua Incorporation, who actually outsources its manufacturing to various countries, most notably in China. Apple designed its product in the U.S., but utilizes a global, global supply chain for production, taking advantage of lower labor costs and a specialized manufacturing expertise abroad. The next one here is global, global supply chains. Walmart, for example, the, which is the world's largest retailer, exemplifies the use of global supply chains. By sourcing products from a diverse range of international suppliers, Walmart can offer competitive pricing and a wide variety of products to its global customer base. Next is the impact of globalization on culture and business. First here is cultural shift in global brands. Now globalization has impacted culture norms and consumer behavior. Brands like Coca-Cola, Starbucks, right, and Apple have become symbols of global culture. Overshadowing the importance of country of origin labels, the focus has shifted from national identity to company reputation and customer relationship management, or CRM. Next is globalization debate and national sovereignty. The debate between proponents of increased trade, global trade and those advocating for national sovereignty reflects the complex nature of globalization. While some argue that for cross-cultural engagement and global trade, others emphasize the importance of national control over economies. The debate over globalization versus the national sovereignty is a no one's and critical discussion in the modern world, touching upon economic, political, and cultural dimension. At its heart, of course, it explores the tension between the economic advantages of the global integration, such as increased trade, investment, economic growth, and the desire of nations to maintain control over their own economic policies, uh, cultural identities, and interdependence. Now, the advocates of globalization argue for the removal of trade barriers and increased international cooperation, suggesting, suggesting that such an approach leads to a more efficient global econom economy and cultural exchange. However, proponents of prior uh, prioritizing national sovereignty cautions against the potential erosion of local industries, their traditions, and the autonomy, advocating for policies that protect national interest. These complex, complex interplay rise, uh, raises, you know, fundamental questions about how countries can best navigate and co um, the forces of global economic integration while safeguarding their sovereignty and cultural heritage, suggesting a need for balanced solutions that foster global cooperation without diminishing national control. Next one here is economic theory and outsourcing and national economies. The globalization role in outsourcing and manufacturing and service jobs, particularly to countries like the India, China, has significant implication. This explores the benefits and costs of outsourcing, not only to businesses and their employees, but also the entire economies. Economic theory on outsourcing within the context of national economies highlights a dual-edge dual impact. 
On one hand, it allows businesses to reduce cost by relocating manufacturing and service, service jobs to countries with lower labor cost, enhancing competitiveness and potentially leading to lower prices for consumers. On the other hand, it raises concern about job losses in higher wage countries and you know, social and economic effects of such shift. This dynamic underscore the complex interplay between seeking efficiency through globalization and managing its repercussions on local labor markets and economic stability. These historical evolution and drivers of globalization reveal a multifaceted process characterized by technological advances, political policies, and economic um, strategies and culture, cultural shifts. Companies like the Apple illustrate the practical implication of these changes. The ongoing debate and evolving nature of globalization highlights its impact on both global economic dynamics and individual national economies. The next topic is the changing demographics of the global economy. So the past decades have seen significant shift in the demographics of the global economy, as we previously discussed. Historically, the United States held a dominant position in, the term, in terms of world economy, world trade, uh, foreign direct investment, that's part of it, large multinational U.S. firm were predominant in the national econo uh, business, uh, international business and many economies, especially the, uh, the communist bloc, were largely close to Western business. However, these dynamics have shifted dramatically over time. Now let's discuss the shift in the world economic power. The first one here is reduction of global um, economic power. Now in 1960s, United, the United States accounted for 38.3% of the world's output. By 2018, this figure had decreased to 24%, reflecting a relative decline, not an absolute one. As other countries, particularly in Asia, experience faster economic growth, China's emergence as a global economic power is noteworthy. Its share of the world output increased from a negligible amount in 1960 to 15.2%. And then by 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 2018, making it making it the second largest economy in terms of world output share. So similarly, countries like Japan, Thailand, um, Taiwan, Malaysia, Brazil, and South Korea have significantly increased their shares um, of world's output. Now, the best example here is the China's economic rise. The growth of China's economy is exemplified by, exemplified by companies like Alibaba and Tencent, Tencent, which have become global giants in e-commerce and technology. China's significant investment in Africa and its built and rolled initiative further demonstrate its expanding global economic influence. So the next one here is changes in global trade dynamics. The U.S. role as the leading trading nation began to be challenged by the end of the 1980s. Over the past 30 years, the U.S. dominance in export market has dominated, diminished, I'm sorry. Countries like China, Japan, um, Germany, South Korea, and China have increased their share of the world's export reflecting the rising economic power of newly industrialized countries. Now, the best example here is South Korea in shift in manufacturing and exports. Uh, South Korea's rise as a technological and manufacturing powerhouse is evident in companies like Samsung and Hyundai. These corporations not only dominate in, in, in 
electronics and automotive sector, automotive sectors, but also contribute significantly to South Korea's export growth. The next topic that we're going to discuss, we're on the fourth one, which is globalization and management practices. Now, what is the, Im the impact of globalization and management and practices? Of course, the first one here is um, globalization of markets. So um, the emerging of historically distinct and separate national market into a single global marketplace is one all right, of the most significant aspects of globalization. These trends has been uh, facilitated by falling barriers to cross-border trade and investment and by the convergence of consumer tastes and preferences across different nations. So, give me one second. So as we discussed earlier that the globalization of market, this is this refers actually to the sourcing of goods and services from location around the globe to take advantage of national differences and the cost and quality of factors of production. Now, example for this is the uh the the brand. So the brand, you know, the brand like um, McDonald's, okay? All right. So as we observe right here that for the globalization of market, one of the example here as well is the McDonald's, Starbucks, and Apple, which have successfully adapted to this trend. Now, McDonald's, for instance, while maintaining its core product offering, localized its menu to cater to regional taste, thereby balancing global brand consistently consistency with local relevance so next one is globalization of production all right this this is actually refers to the sourcing of goods and services from location around the globe to take advantage of the national differences in cost and product uh, quality of factors to production the aim is to lower uh, the overall cost of structures or improve product quality to functionality, thereby enhancing global competitiveness. Example here is the uh, a Boeing production strategy for aircraft like the 77, 777 and 787 illustrate this trend. Parts of these aircraft are made in different countries, leveraging the expertise and cost advantages of each location. For the 787, about 65% of the total value is outsourced to foreign companies, including major contributions from Japan. Next is the outsourcing and offshoring uh, um, in services. With advances in communication technology, particularly the internet, companies are increasingly outsourcing, not just manufacturing, but also service activities to lower cost producers in other countries. Hospitals, this is the best example in the US, outsource the radiology work to India, where images from MRI scans are uh, read overnight and the result are ready for US physicians by morning. Microsoft also utilizes Indian engineers for software testing, utilizing the time difference to enhance productivity. Now, what are the challenges and considerations that needs to take good care of? So the first one here is managing global supply chain. So for managing the global supply chain, companies like Apple face challenges in managing complex global supply chains. For example, the iPhone is assembled in China with components sourced globally. This strategy requires careful coordination and management of logistics quality control, and supplier relationships. So navigating, the second one is navigating geopolitical political dynamics. Geopolitical tensions such as trade disputes between the U.S. and China can impact global production decisions. So for instance, Apple has had 
to consider diversifying its production location and increasing investment in the U.S. In response to such tension, third one here is balancing global and local needs. So companies must balance the efficiency gains from global standardization with the need for local adaptation. While global brands have succeeded in creating a universal appeal, they'll still need to account for local consumer preferences, regulatory environments, and cultural nuances. Next is economic and political risk. Globalization exposes companies to, range, to a range of economic and political risk, including currency fluctuations, trade barriers, and varying legal environments. The challenge for management is to mitigate this risk while cap capitalizing on global opportunities. In summary, globalization presents both opportunities and challenges for management practices. The shift towards more um, same thing. So the shift, yeah, towards um, a more integrated global economy requires businesses to adopt their strategies, particularly in the areas of global supply chain management, geopolitical and, um, navigation, and balancing global standardization with local adaptation. Companies like Apple and Boeing serve as illustrative example of how businesses can leverage globalization for competitive advantage while navigation navigating its complexities. The fifth topic is the second to the last topic is globalization's opportunities and challenges. So, of course, there are a lot of challenges and opportunities that they, uh, need to take care of. And uh, these are the following. The opportunities of globalization. The first one is this expansion of business and re revenue growth. Globalization allows firms to expand their markets beyond national bar, uh, borders, enabling them to reach a larger customer base and increase revenues. So, for example, like Apple have successfully sold products globally, benefiting from that vast market in various countries. Next is cost reduction through global production. Businesses can reduce production costs by leveraging global, global differences in the cost of inputs including labor, for instance, many companies outsource manufacturing to countries with lower labor costs like China and India, thereby reducing their overall cost structure. And lastly is technological advancement. So advances in technology have lowered transportation costs and enabled the rise of skilled workers in developing uh, countries. This trend had led or has led to a more flat world where geographical location is less of a barrier to business success and opportunities. Challenges of globalization. The first one is political, economic uncertainty. Recent political events like Brexit and renegotiations of NAFTA, which is the more North American Free Trade Agreement, and a trade dispute between the U.S. and China have introduced uncertainties regarding the future of globalization. So these events have led to questions about the benefits of globalization and the balance between national sovereignty and global trade. Next is the impact of domestic jobs and industries. Globalization has transformed in, in the industries and created anxiety among those who previously believed their jobs were protected from foreign competitions. There is growing concern in developed nations about job losses, losses due to outsourcing and offshoring to countries with cheaper labor. Next is adjustment to global economic shift. Companies must constantly adapt their strategies to global economic shift. For example, Apple had adjusted its strategy by diversifying the assembly operation and investing more in the U.S. in response to U.S.-China trade disputes and potential risk of over-reliance on Chinese manufacturing. So another example here is the strategic advancement 
or adjustment. So in response to political and economic challenges, such as trade, tensions, and criticism from the U.S. government, Apple has started adjusting its strategy. This includes establishing assembly operation outside of China, increasing investment in the U.S., and assisting U.S.-based suppliers to become efficient partners. So globalization presents a complex landscape of opportunities and challenges for business. While it offers avenues for expansion and cost reduction, it also brings about uncertainties and you know, necessitates strategic adju adjustment in the face of political and economic changes. Understanding and navigating this landscape is crucial for businesses operating in the global market. The last topic that we're going to discuss is future globalization. So first one here is the, the current trend and future scenarios. So the future of globalization is shaped. So the current trend and future scenarios. So the first one here is technological advancement. So continued technological innovation, um, especially in digital technologies and communication is expected to further reduce barriers to global trade and investment. This likely make global markets even more accessible and integrated. Second is political and economic policies. Now, of course, the role of political and economic policies will remain crucial. Policies promoting free trade and investment can facilitate globalization, while protectionist policies may hinder it. The renegotiation of trade agreement like NAFTA and, event, and events like Brexit are examples of political ac actions that can shape the directions of globalization. Third is economic power shift. The rise of emerging economies, particularly in Asia, is expected to continue. The shift in economic power may lead to a more multipolar world econ economy with a greater balance between Western economies and emerging markets. Fourth is sustainability and ethical consideration. Increasing focus on sustainability and ethical businesses practices may influence globalization. Companies may face pressures to adopt more environmentally friendly practices to ensure and to ensure fair label standard in their global operations. Now, what are the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in globalization? Of course, first is disruption of global supply chains. Chains. The pandemic highlighted vulnerabilities in global supply chain. Many companies, you know, actually are are uh, evaluating the reliance on distant suppliers and considering more regional or localized supply chains to reduce risk. Second is acceleration of digital transformation. The pandemic accelerated adoption of digital technologies for remote work, e-commerce, and online communication. This trend will continue to reshape global businesses, uh, global business practices, and consumer behaviors. The next one here, or the third one, is potential for increased protectionism. Economic challenges resulting from the pandemic may lead some countries to adopt more protectionist measures to safeguard domestic industries, potentially impacting global then trade dynamics. Fourth is health and safety standard. Global health and safety standards are likely to become more prominent in international business, affecting how companies operate and manage their global workforce. So the future of globalization is likely to be characterized by a balance between continuing integration, driven by technological advances and economic shift, and um, potential challenges from political actions and global crisis like the COVID-19 pandemic. So while globalization is likely to continue, its form and intensity may vary as businesses, government, and societies to adopt new real realities and priorities. The ability to navigate this evolving you know, landscape will crucial 
for businesses and political uh, or policy uh, makers alike. So thank you so much, everyone, for listening and watching my video.